When you hear someone is a millionaire, what do you picture? A business owner? An executive? Maybe a person in private equity? What about someone who works for the federal government? Do you ever think of that? There are over 88,000 federal employees, current and retired, that are millionaires. This is not your congressmen or your senators. This is regular rank and file federal government employees. And the reason that they're millionaires is three letters. TSP. The TSP is much like a 401k. You contribute to it and the government matches your contribution to 5%. What allows federal government employees to be millionaires within the TSP? It's just contributing consistently, putting money in there every pay period. It's not day trading. It's not stock options. It's simply being consistent and waiting. And over the years, the money compounds. When you first accept and start a government job, there's two things that are default, that are done for you. The first one is your contribution rate. How much are you actually putting into the TSP? Now the default rate is 3%, sometimes it could be 5%, sometimes it depends, but you can change that. You can contribute more based on your situation. You can actually contribute all the way up to $23,000 a year in 2024. You should at least do 5%. Why? Because the government's going to match you with 5%. That is essentially free money. You need to take advantage of that. The next thing that's defaulted is what are you investing into? What funds are you buying? In the TSP, there are a lot of different funds. And what is done automatically is your money is going into a life cycle fund. It starts with an L. It'll be L2040, L2045. The year is the estimation on when they expect you to retire. Now, I don't like life cycle funds at all. And the main reason is life cycle funds have G and I fund in it. I don't like anything to do with the G fund. I don't like anything to do with the I fund. G fund is government securities. And I fund is international stock index. So what I prefer, now this is a preference, I prefer the C fund and the S fund. Those two funds invest into the S&P 500 and the Dow. And you can look in the past and see how have they performed against each other. So check this out. The last 10 years, the C and the S completely outperformed the G fund. Same is true with the I fund. And then if you look at lifetime, same thing, outperformed. Of course, past performance does not guarantee future performance. But when it comes to my money, the dollars that I'm putting in, I trust U.S. companies to continue to grow, to continue to be prosperous. And that's why I largely like to look at the C and the S fund. I don't necessarily trust international markets. I don't know anything about international markets. And securities historically give you a low return. In exchange, you get some sort of stability, but I don't like that low return. I'm not that old where I need to diversify and look at bonds or other securities to make sure I'm not in trouble later down the road. What you will usually see is people, they will assign a percentage to the funds. So let's look at CNS. You could do 50%, 50%. You could do 75%, 25%, right? 75% could be C, 25% could be S. And in that way, you could potentially see greater returns than somebody who is more in the I and G fund. I'm not gonna tell you exactly what your allocation should be for your TSP, but I tell you what, it's probably a good idea to have a mix of C and S. So when can you expect your millions? Let's plug this information into a retirement calculator to get a rough idea. If you're hired as a GS-12 at 30 years old and you contribute 5% with a 5% match with an 8% annual rate of return, you would hit $1.1 million after 30 years. And you would hit about $2 million after 35 years. If you contribute more money than that, let's say you get promoted to GS-13, GS-14, and you want to put more money in there, we've, we have people that have a $3 million balance for their TSP. In fact, the largest TSP account was recently reported to be over $9 million. Many people start off on the right track. They're contributing. They're doing everything right, but they fall victim to one of the common mistakes that people make with TSPs. The first one is not having an emergency fund. You need to have an emergency fund. Start, it, start off with one month and then gradually you know, push it out to three months, six months if you can. Living expenses need to be saved just in case something happens. 
because what ends up occurring is right now we're in a high inflation environment. Everything costs more money. So maybe you have a medical emergency. Maybe something happens to your car. A family member needs help. Things happen. And you don't want to be put in a situation where you don't have the funds available, but you have that TSP sitting off to the side. That's your little golden egg back there. Maybe you have 100000 in there, 100, 150000 200000 and you decide to tap it. You can borrow from your TSP. But I would tell you that is a mistake. You should not get into the mentality of, I'm going to tap into my TSP. I'm going to borrow from myself. Don't put yourself in that situation. Another thing is, if, you're, if you have all that money in the S fund, let's say 100%, and the market takes a downturn, you're going to feel it. If we enter a recession and you're 100% in the S fund, it's going to hurt. Can you sleep at night? Can you be at peace without worrying about what's happening with my S fund? What's happening with my TSP? Am I losing all my money? When people get too aggressive, it usually ends up hurting them. Look at 2020. NASDAQ was on a roar. All these growth stocks, right? <laughs> you couldn't go wrong with picking a stock. Everything was going up 10%, 20%. Everybody was jumping on Fang, right? Amazon, Netflix. They could do no wrong. But now... Look at the growth stocks. You're not seeing impressive performance. You might see some performance, you know, one or two companies, but overall the NASDAQ hasn't been doing that great. So keep that in mind. Another mistake is not contributing early enough or not sticking with it throughout the years. The absolute best time to contribute to your TSP is when you're in your 20s. When you first start working, that's the best time. Sure, it's helpful to do it in your 40s and 50s, but there's no time like your 20s because you're giving it time to compound over the years and decades. So I know you're not going to be making a lot of money when you first start out. Maybe you're only making 50, 60,000 a year and you're looking at 5% like, oh my goodness, 5%. This is thousands of dollars that I could be using. I could use it to buy a better car, nicer clothes, but don't do that. Do not fall into that trap. Invest in yourself first by maximizing your contributions at a young age. I'll tell you what some people do when they get promoted in the government. Let's say they go from GS11 to GS12. They take the difference between those two different pay grades and they just put it in their TSP. Because they've never had that money, they don't miss that money. Same thing could be said when you go from step one to step two, you go from step two to step three, you're getting small increases. It's like 3%, 3.5%. That money could go right into your TSP and you can build that nest egg quicker and you'll hit a million dollars a lot quicker than most people. Okay, if you're still looking for a federal government job, you're on usajobs.gov. That's a confusing, that's a painful website at times. There's some tips that you should know to help you get a government job quicker. If you're interested in these tips, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.